Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create VR grabbables for Unity 2022.2. To start with, I'm going to go through the basics of the scene I've got set up, which is continuing on from my last video, which was how to set up Unity for VR in 2022.2. But anyway, here we go. We have our XR origin. This is our XR player. So we have a camera offset, a main offset, a hand and a right hand. So as you can see, we have all of the input already set up. This is from our start assets. If you're missing these, you can go to your package manager and then go down to the XR interaction toolkit all the way down at the bottom. Under samples, we have starter assets. You can just import those and you should have under this samples folder, some default input already made up for you, developed by Unity. So we have this set up inside an input action manager component on top of our interaction manager to make sure that our controllers actually can have input so we can grab items. Other than that, we just have a simple plane for a floor. And now we're ready to get started and creating our 3D grabbable object. So to start with, we need to flesh out our scene a little bit more. I'm going to create a little 3D cube and use this as a table. So my 3D objects will be in reach. I'm then going to create another 3D cube, but this one I'm going to scale all the way down. Bring it up here and I'm going to give it a different color. So I've got this matte yellow. I'm going to give it that just to make it stand out apart from the table. And you know what? I'll create a new material to make the table stand out as well. So we'll, we'll make a nice blue. So I'll assign that to my table and then give it a different color. Right then, so now that we have our cube, I'm going to rename this to grabbable and our table to a table. We're going to give this the XR grab interactable and this will automatically create a rigid body component. And straight away, this will work with the basic setup of the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. If we enter play mode, we should be able to grab this with the ray, in, ray interactors located on our controllers. So I'm just going to put on the headset. As you can see, I have my hand controllers here and there's a little yellow cube. And when the ray interactor goes over the cube and we press the grip trigger, it moves to our hand and it tracks to our hand. So that is the very, very basic implementation of VR Grabbables. But what does all these settings on the VR Grabbable actually mean? Well, they let us customize how we actually grab this object. So to start with, we get a reference to our interaction manager component. Unity grabs this for us already. And we have an interaction layer mask. So we can go on our ray interactors and we can change the layer mask that they work on to make it so only certain interactors can hit certain interactables. And then we have our movement type. So this is actually really important if you are looking at physics grabbable components. So what I mean by this is objects that while held still are calculated in the physics engine within Unity. So by default, we're on instantaneous. This gives us smoother tracking into the hand at the cost of while held, they don't interact with any other physics objects. So just to demonstrate once more, I'll go back into the play scene. If I pick up this cube, I can clip it through our table, even though the table has a collider and while not held, the physics work, as you can see. So to get around this, we can change this to velocity tracking. Now, what this does is it sacrifices some of that tracking smooth performance in regard for actually having physics simulation. So now when we enter play mode, I'll keep the scene view open just so you can actually see the physics interaction a little better than you can walk through the VR game view. So as you can see, we grab the cube and boom, the cube now collides with the table. And when we throw it, it still works and there we go we can grab it again we get nice physics interactions and that's how you can have physical objects that are grabbable so right now we're working with the ray interactors that come with standard on 
our XR rig. But these don't work like hands. So say you have some 3D hands and when you approach an object with the hands, you want to be able to grab it that way, not via shooting a line ray cast out of the controller. So to do this, we're going to remove the VR, the XR ray interactor and the XR line visual from this game object. You'll note if I try to remove the line renderer, it says we can't remove the line renderer because the line interactor, line interactor depends on it. So we have to remove the line interactor first, then the line renderer. And we're going to do this again for the right hand. Remove the ray interactor, the line interactor and the line renderer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a direct interactor. And because this comes automatically with an XR controller already attached, we want to make sure that gets removed because our left hand controller already has our XR controller set up. So we're going to remove this. All we want is the sphere collider to use as a trigger and the XR direct interactor. So if we look at this, we get a nice sphere, sphere collider going around our controller. And this is basically the interaction zone. When something enters this trigger, we'll be able to pick it up. So we're going to duplicate this and put one on our right hand as well and make sure we get rid of that little one. Now on the direct interactors, we can hide the controller on select. Activating this tick box will mean when something gets grabbed, the 3D mesh of the controller will disable and it will look like we're holding the 3D object. But first, we must go to our left hand controller and we need to make sure that the model transform is set to the mesh. By default, this is empty, so you make sure you'll be able to drag your mesh component onto here, otherwise the hide on select will not work. And the same goes for the right hand controller. By default, this will be empty, so make sure you drag this over here and onto there for the hide on select to work. Now, if we press play, we'll be able to see this in action. So if I go back to the scene view, you can see my controllers and the cube, and we move the hand inside it, press the grip trigger, and boom, it moves to our hand as if we've picked it up and the controller is disabled. And we can even pass the object to different hands and we get our mesh back on when we release the, the trigger. And as before, this still works with the physics system because of the type of tracking we have enabled. Now, finally, we're going to move on to something called attach points. So if we go to our grabbable, we have this setting down here called the attach transform. This is the pivot point where we'll grab the object. So let's say if we turn this cube into, say, a gun, we'll be, we will want the attach point to be inside of the handle. So it's just going to scale this cube just a little bit. I'm going to create a new 3D cube for our handle. I'm going to need this hand, handle. And then we want to scale this down scale it like so and create a nice little handle for our gun now we're going to use this handle as our attached transform because that's where we're going to want to grip it by so we'll see this point here will be our grip position we could create an empty game object and use that transform instead but for the purpose of this demo using just the game object for the handle would do us fine so if I go down, we've got it attached. So if we go into play mode, go back to the scene view, you can see we have our gun. And when I bring the hand into the gun, no matter where we do it, so if we go near the end of the barrel and press the select trigger, it goes to our handle. So if I go to the game view to show this a little bit better, you'll be able to see that this is on the handle where we've got it gripped it's not from the center of the mass it's it's all down here so again if i grab there you'll see it move into position and we can exit play mode and that is basic handles 
and attach transforms. Now, if we leave the attach transform as none and use dynamic attach, we'll actually grab the object from the point where the mesh of our controls is interacting. So if we hit play again, but this time, instead of attaching to the attach transform, what will happen is we'll grab it from the point where we have gripped it. So let's say up in this top corner, you'll see we've gripped the top corner. This will actually be better demonstrated by leaving the controller mesh on after select. So let's, let's deselect on select hide and do this for the right hand as well. And again, if we bring it over here, we can see this is where we've gripped the object. This is more useful for more uh, interactive things. So if you want less of an attach point and more of you can grip it from anywhere like Half-Life Alex and such, you can use this. However, this will be a more complicated system to use with, say, VR hands as getting the fingers to procedurally wrap around the mesh could be quite a challenge, but it is doable. And as you can see, we've got our physics tracking all working fine. You can hear me bashing the table with my controller, but as you can look, it pulls it away. And as soon as it can go back, it moves back. And that's it for basic VR grabbables.